Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of this project. Now, um, I would like to address before um, we before we start. Uh, the car's name is Pepita. I have officially decided that on my own. Um, but I would still like to hear your guys' name suggestions. Um, or, like, nickname suggestions, I guess, um, for the car. Um, because I got, I got a lot of comments on the last episode, and I would like to say thank you to all the people who did comment on the last episode. And, um, yeah. I, this has been w much more well received than I, to be honest, thought it would be. So, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, so, first off, um... What you're saying here is, from the last episode, I believe, it was still, um, compression tests, and the, so, the compression test is how much pressure the engine is making against the air that's in the cylinder when it's trying to fire, and you need a certain amount of that for the engine to actually be healthy. So we were testing that, and when my dad pulled out the tube for the, um, compression tester, um, we, the fitting came off the end of it, and so it was stuck in the uh, cylinder hole for the um, for the spark plug. And because this has the thin wall um, or the small spark plug holes, I guess um, it was extra hard to get out. And so we tried all sorts of different things, but I. I took a long, like, one of those things that uh, you can, like, use, say, for example, when you are working on cars and a screw, like, falls down into the engine where you can't reach it with your hand. Um, you can take, it's basically a long stick with grabbers at the end that you can grab stuff with. And so that's what I use to um, pull, pull it out um, when that happened. So, uh... I was mostly, so I just went through and t twisted it with it. It was very complicated to do um, and whatnot. But it, unfortunately, the camera didn't actually catch, capture the uh, moment when I finally pulled it out because the camera has a 10 minute limit and we don't know how to turn it off. So, um, yeah, if, yeah. Um, but anyway. Uh, yeah. So, basically, after that we went through and did the compression tests again, just to make sure that we were reading everything, you know, correctly-ish. And we discovered that it was making basically the same compression. So after we went through and did all the compression tests again, we did a little bit of research and discovered that um, a way that you can get a little bit more accurate um, compression tests is if you go through and you put a little bit of engine oil on top of the um, piston in while it's inside the cylinder and that will actually properly lubricate the, um, uh, the uh, piston rings to the same way that they would be when the engine is actually running, and it gives it a little bit more accurate of a reading. And so we went through and we did that. And we we discovered after we went through and did that that it was not quite as accurate, um, accurate of readings as, um, or not accurate, but they weren't quite as deep, better as we had hoped they were. Um, so, actually, so next what we did was we went through we did what's called a cylinder leak down test and that's basically where you you put the spark plugs back in the holes um 
in, back in the holes that you're not measuring, and then you and then you put a and then you put similar to the um similar to the uh, compression test. You put the um you hold on, I'm trying to think. You put the tube inside the cylinder again to make sure that it's you know tight with air, and then you take a compressor and a valve and you slowly let air into it and that will pressurize the system and you can actually tell where leaks are coming out of and so the engine has to be at top dead center when you do this otherwise you'll get leaks in the system um anyway and you can get a faulty reading but um so we discovered after we put the engine at top dead center that um we were still getting a leak from the intake, and that means that um, that means that when the engine is at top dead center, the intake valve is slightly open or fully open, which is not good because this is an interference engine. I can't remember if I explained this in the last episode, but this is an interference engine, and that's very bad if the valve is open, be- or because if the valve is open when the piston is at top dead center, which means it's at its highest point, um, then the piston can actually hit the valve, and that will bend the valves, and that will make it so that they won't, the engine won't run correctly because the valves are bent and they will be letting air in and exhaust out when they shouldn't be and things like that. That is a very bad thing. So here you can see us rigging everything together and yeah, putting it all together and everything. So here you can see us listening around for leaks, and we could hear a leak coming from somewhere on that um, left side of the engine. Um, it sounded like it was coming from like the dipstick or something like that, but we actually never found where it was. But we figured that because it was the engine wasn't at top dead center when we did it this this time, that it was because the en- it was leaking out like the exhaust or something. Um, through the turbo side, um, and so that's that's what we were hearing there. So here we were take this is taking off the wheel. This will be um, we'll continue this particular portion of our testing in the next video. But this is where we were taking off the wheel so that we could access the crankshaft to take or to put the engine at top dead center for the. Um, for the uh, for the leak down test, and the one the one shiny um, shiny thing that you see on the wheel there that's not actually on there all the time. So for people who have OCD out there, don't worry. That's um, that's just our key for our locking um, for our locking nuts that we have on there that they the uh, the previous owners put them on there or one of the previous owners. I don't. I think this car has had like two, three, like either three or four previous owners. So, yeah. I'm surprised if it has had that many owners. All of them have kept the car in amazing condition. I don't know if I mentioned that in the last episode, but the exterior and the interior both are in amazing condition. It's just a few things mechanically because minis do like to go wrong because underneath they are secretly a BMW and when BMWs go wrong, they go wrong bad, or at least not all of them, but a good portion of them. But that's going to do it for this video. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. One quick thing before we end, I am trying to post these every single Saturday. So, um, pretty much look out for them every Saturday. But uh, that's going to do it for this episode, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.